Today I'm going to be installing this wiring harness for, uh, for when you're towing uh, a trailer. Uh, it has a flat four connector on the back. Um, this one is from Hopkins. I got it from eTrailer. The part number is 41964. It says it's for a 2012 to 13 TC, but this will actually work for the 2011 to 2016. So the nice thing about this kit is that um, the, the, the hookup is really easy. Uh, the red wire is going to go to the battery using this extension wire. It comes with a fuse, and then you basically just attach that to the positive terminal. Um, it also comes with a cap for the end of the harness, as well as uh, terminal grease, and then some zip ties. So here's the main unit itself, the black box. And uh, there's also a wire that you're going to have to ground. They say that you have to drill a hole... Uh, clean it and then screw it in. I'm gonna see if there's somewhere else that I can just use use an existing bolt So I don't have to actually drill a hole to wire this in So all right, so you can see you've got additional harnesses on this side. This is gonna go to the driver's side rear tail light This is gonna go to the passenger side rear tail light. So let me go ahead and grab my panel popping tool All right, so fussed around a bit to figure out the best place to mount this and I mean probably mounting it down under here might be better but getting this paneling off is a huge pain um, especially if you need to get to this again for some reason so uh, what I've done is I've tucked it behind the harness here um, up against the car and then I got a longer zip tie and I've wrapped it um, going through the back and then up and around on the back side of here uh, and that is going to keep this in place then I've taken the green wire as well as the uh, flat four wire and I've dropped it down through here and then I grabbed it from underneath and I've pulled it through onto this side here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna secure it to the existing um, wire loom harness here with zip ties I'm gonna give it a little bit of slack though uh, that way if I need to you know move this and pull it out I'll have slack to move the wire around uh, and then, of course, I've left uh, the ground wire out at the moment, and then the power wire is here. So before we do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and pull the clip out on here, and then grab the other harness here. I'm just going to just... Plugs right in there. And then this, line it up is just going to plug right into there and that's it that's actually really easy i think the hardest part with this uh with this wiring harness is literally just going to be running the wires itself but that's a, that's a pretty easy install right there great so now let's go ahead um i'm gonna secure these wires and then we'll clip the passenger side one in so getting the green wire up here and out of here is going to be a lot harder than simply dropping the wire down so what I've actually done is I have some paracord to keep in the car. So I just dropped the paracord down here and have tied off the end of the wire. So now I'm just going to stick the wire down here and pull it out. So that's the easiest way to run the wire through. So um, there is plenty of extra green wire that comes with it here. So once I get everything all plugged in and zip tied, I'm just going to... Um, roll up the rest of the wire and zip tie it together out of the way. So let's go ahead though. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the paracord from here and then plug this harness in on this side. As you can see, I went ahead and zip tied the excess green wire close to the harness. Um, this way it's easy to get to. And then what I'll probably do is just take another big zip tie and put bundle this all together so it doesn't vibrate. Um, and then I have put a zip tie here, here, two here and I'll explain why and then uh, one here and I've left a little bit of slack in case I need to uh, take the box out of here so the reason for the two here is that when you reinstall this piece which literally just pops straight down and then you can lift it straight up and off um, this is gonna hang out the back and then you close the trunk on it and then you connect your uh, your uh, harness to the trailer so, but when then when you're not using it, then you just pull it back in and stick it here. So I use two zip ties so, uh, because you know, this is getting pulled on a little bit. I don't want to I don't want it to accidentally come loose, and just want it to be more secure. 
So that's the reason for the two zip ties there. All right, now let's figure out where to uh, ground this and then run power. So I've unscrewed the D-ring from here. It's a 10 millimeter bolt and I'm gonna use that to ground the box here. So as you can see, I've actually cut the end here so that I can open it up a little bit because the bolt uh, is going to be a little bit bigger than the original hole, but now it's gonna fit through. So I'm gonna mount it so that if you look here, it's gonna be this direction. So the flat end is facing, facing you and it's gonna slide it around the back here on the trim and then put it in front of the hole. And it's a little hard for me to do it with one hand, unfortunately, but uh, there we go. Kind of, kind of got it there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put that in place and then mount that. Now that the ground is firmly mounted here, all that's left to do is connect the power. So I'm gonna use the supplied wire and run it um, underneath the trim here and then down along the side of the, uh, the trim to the front to under the dash, but instead of going through the firewall and connecting the battery with this, I'm going to go ahead and tap into the fuse box under the dash using this microblade fuse tap. So I've got a 15 amp fuse already installed in there. All I have to do is find an open slot and plug it in. Um, and uh, I'm going to want to plug it into a slot that's always on if I want to mimic uh, you know, hooking it up directly to the battery. The easiest way to do that is to just use a little light tester tool and just find, find one of the plugs that's always on. The first thing that I want to do is have access to the bottom edge of this trim so I can just basically slide the wire underneath and run it towards the trunk. Uh, once I get that done, then it's, the rest is going to be easy. I'm just going to have to run it underneath of here to the front. So in order to get underneath it here, just reach your hand underneath um, right around here and lift straight up. And you'll see just basically that's how, that's how it's clipped down into here. And it's the same way on the other side. So lift off both ends and then you can get to the bottom of the trim there. Use my panel popping tool here, get this one clip out. And basically now I can just lift this up and just tuck the wire up underneath and then run it along to the back there. And then of course the other end along the front here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out as well. Just gotta lift it, pull it away from the, from uh, the pull it back this way a little bit and then lift it straight up and do the same thing on the front. And you can see I already have other wires run through there. Great, so now, in order to get it over to here, we need to remove this piece here. So uh, use an extension with a 10 millimeter socket and remove this bolt and this bolt. All right, and that plastic piece just pops right out. So all we're gonna do is run the red wire up here and then I'm gonna just tuck it and run it along the back side of this trim all the way uh, underneath here uh, to uh, the back seats and then under and then behind the trim on along the door and then underneath of here I have my wire run but I haven't tucked it underneath of here yet because I just wanted to show you how it's run so as you can see this is just gonna go all uh, behind here and I've managed to keep it running underneath of everything here And then it runs, you can see the wire runs down. Actually, you can't really see it, but the wire runs down there. And you can see it coming out here. It's gonna go behind all of this. Um, and then it's gonna get tucked underneath back here, and then tucked underneath here. So these little plastic clips, if you um, pull them this way a little bit at the base and then lift it up, you can just tuck the wire in there and clip it, and then I've run it up and then around to the top here. All right, so I've got my wires all tucked in now. I'm reinstalling the back seat. So uh, just basically pull your seat belt uh, back through and uh, slide it into the back and line it up here. And you'll find it's, it's actually a little tricky to get it to clip back into place, but okay, so you look at where it's clipped right there, and the easiest way to do is to just Take your palm of your hand and slam it right there until it pops back into place. And let's do that for both sides. All right. Now it's got to go ahead and reinstall this trim here as well. So this is just going to go right down into place. 
and then push it straight down. And all that's left now is to reinstall this piece. So you can see all of the wires all nicely tucked away. So this piece is just going to slide right back into place right here. It's gonna kind of clip into place here a little bit and then screw it back down. With the wire run, the next thing that you wanna do is connect the wire to the box here. Uh, so I'm gonna give myself about a foot of slack wire and then wrap up the extra and zip tie it and then cut the end off, uh, strip a little bit of wire, like about that much there, stick it into the butt connector and then crimp it with my crimping tool once I find it at least. With the wire and back crimped in place, uh, it's time to do the front. So I don't really want any slack on the front, that's why I gave myself that extra loop of wire on the back. So I'm gonna cut this around here and then crimp the fuse onto it here. Now the fuse itself, let me see if I can get underneath the dash and have the camera focus. It's gonna plug in down here. Now you can see I already have a few uh, fuse taps in place. Uh, now there are a few open spots. Some of them are always on. Some of them are only on when the car's on. That's where you're gonna wanna use your test light. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take my test light and I believe one of these 20 amp fuses uh, is always on. I'm just gonna take my test light and test light is on, so yes. So I'm gonna use this 20 amp fuse here, the one that is closest to the door. All right, Ugh. so I'm gonna go ahead and pop that fuse out and then I'll show you how to, um, I'll show you how it clips in the ear and then plugs in. Right, I used my pliers to pull the 20 amp fuse out of the fuse box and if you look here, it's gonna go on the bottom of the fuse tap. So that'll basically uh, let that continue to function as a normal 20 amp fuse in that slot. And then the fuse that's gonna go to your accessory is gonna go in the top. And you can, you can just tell because that's where the wire is at. So now I'm gonna go ahead and plug this back in. And here it is reinstalled now. Uh, note that the wire is uh, coming off of the fuse tap is going towards the front of the car. That's important because the the end that is closer to you is the live side and the side towards the front of the car is the side that's supposed to be fused. So you want to make sure that you run the wires this way. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my test light to the back of the car to the uh, four flat connector and just basically turn on my hazards and make sure that power is going to um, the plug back there. I've already tested my harness so I know it works, but let me show you what you can do to test it yourself. So go ahead, turn on your tail lamp uh, and your hazard lights. Take your test light, connect it to the ground here with the clip, it's the white wire, and then probe the brown wire here. This is going to be the tail light. So as you can see, it's on now. Yellow wire will be the driver's side turn signal and brake, and as you can see, it's flashing to the hazard light and then the green wire will be the passenger side so I'm gonna stick that in there and as you can see it's also flashing so in order to test the brakes you'll need to have someone um, in the car turn the hazard signals off and then just probe the yellow wire and the green wire again so when they push down the brakes the test light should light up as well um, it will not uh, be a solid brake light if the turn signals are activated, so that's why you have to make sure the hazard lights are off when you're testing. Once you've confirmed that uh, the harness is functioning properly, you'll be ready to uh, tow a trailer. I hope this helps you out. Thanks for watching.